An emerging markets phone carrier, Veon, has triggered succession plans for its CEO. That comes as the company reported fourth quarter EBITDA, EBITDA earnings before interest tax, depreciation, amortization that beat estimates. Joining us now for an exclusive interview is the now outgoing CEO, but still chair of Veon, that is Ursula Burns, who joins me now on set here in London. Very good to have you with us then, Ursula. It's great to be here. Uh, so to be here. You, you were brought in in 2017 by Russian billionaire backer Mikhail Friedman uh, to bolster the company's corporate governance. And the fact that you're stepping away as CEO, do you feel that a lot of progress has been made in that area? What's triggering this at this, at this point? Well, it's always great to make changes when you have positive results so first of all the fourth quarter and full year results are strong and uh, it's uh, we can build on that success going forward I was brought in as chairman originally and it was not only for corporate governance but it was also for kind of overlooking and seeing um, operational excellence if you recall at that time we had a monitor in the company and we were under a deferred prosecution agreement mm -hmm. all of that has been uh, cleaned up and done we've successfully gotten through that uh, we've stabilized the business across all 10 of our markets. And so it's a good time. It's a good time to, to move on. And do you feel then that the business, the valuation that the market attaches to the business better reflects your expectations for growth in emerging markets? I mean, we'll talk about coronavirus and the threat to emerging markets from that. But, but do you feel that the valuation story that the market is buying into around emerging markets, is it on the right track? I think it's, it's getting on the right track. We are still, in my opinion, severely undervalued. Uh, we have a growth story and a performance story that has been shown in this in 2019 and particularly in the fourth quarter that still requires a, a little bit more of a valuation kick. But I'm willing to wait a little bit. You know, we'll, we'll just keep, keep plugging along, keep doing. You know, I learned early you have to say what you're going to do and then do it and eventually you become a boring company. That's <laughs> my goal, to become a boring company. Say what we're going to do and do it. Boring, not always so bad. Matt, uh, jump in here. Yeah, well, first of all, I want to say, Ursula, it's fantastic to have you on the program. Um, I've been following you since you were running Xerox, and you're still obviously on the board of a number of companies in the uh, uh, major companies. In the telecoms industry, which you're focused on right now, what do you think about the effects of the coronavirus? I mean, how does that affect an industry like yours? We just had, for example, the Mobile World Congress in Barcelona either postponed or completely canceled because of this. So it's definitely, um, it definitely is in the news. Yeah, it, it's, anything that impacts global growth is uh, not good for business. Uh, we prefer to have buoyant markets everywhere. Even though for the 10 markets that we do business in, the coronavirus still has not had a really significant direct effect. And I don't believe that it will um, have one if it's managed uh, by the health organizations around the world um, well. Uh, the services that we provide uh, will not be directly impacted. We do get a lot of our kit from Chinese suppliers, and we have to be careful uh, about that from a supply chain perspective. But like I said, if it, if it impacts global growth, it kind of puts a damper on everything around the world, and I'm hoping that we can get this out of, uh, under control pretty quickly. In terms of the supply chain, I mean, network equipment, a lot of it obviously comes from China. I think China is the biggest maker in the world of mobile phones themselves. How much of a supply chain, um, how much of a supply chain problem has this caused from your vantage point? From, for us, uh, and I think for the telecom industry in general, but for Vion specifically, nothing yet. Not a lot of impact yet. Uh, the, the way that we actually deploy the, the kit that we get, the, the technology that we get, doesn't really require a significant amount of global travel from China to my markets. It does require some, um, but it is very specialized and, and easily planned and well planned so we can actually get in front of this a little bit. But like I said, I don't think that the world has really um, dealt with something uh, like this if it goes to full scale. So I can't really protect, uh, uh, project what's going to really happen here. But our markets are so far are not really that uh, significantly impacted. So far. So, so we'll, far. So we'll watch to see to see how that goes. And let me talk to you about some of your other markets. I mean, Russia watching the coronavirus outbreak, not all that far from its borders, just like anybody, just like many other countries. What are the steps that you're taking to address weakness in, in the Russian part of the business? Yeah, we, we have, you know, some challenges in Russia. It's 50 percent of our business and it has to go well. And 2019 was a year of what I call 
understanding, stabilizing, and preparing for and investing for growth. We have four, uh, three areas that we're, that we're focused on. One is on our network and network quality and making sure that we have 4G up as many places as possible and we become an excellent service provider. We had fallen behind there. Second is distribution. Um, we actually still have, Russia still has, we do as well, a significant amount of stores. We want to actually make sure that we actually move those upscale, become very efficient in them, but move more and more uh, to digital uh, distribution. Mm. And the third is pricing. I mean, it, it, if you think about packages and plans and all the stuff that you can buy, being transparent and being efficient in communications of the services that we can provide and how customers um, can engage with them is really important. So we're going to focus on those three areas. As you know, we announced a change in leadership in, uh, in Russia as well. By the way, the leader, the ex-leader did a really good job. Um, we have two new CEOs. One of them is a telecom expert. Uh, and we're going to actually make sure that he's focused on fixing that market. Okay, so that's the Russian side of things. Let me also ask you about uh, the, the green agenda, because this is something that many investors are very focused on. And clearly in your business, there's a lot of data yeah. and you need to store that data. Uh, some estimates uh, show that uh, data centers are expected to reach 25% of the global energy consumption Good in the deal. future. So what, you, what can you do to reduce the impact on the environment? This is a place there, partnerships with providers, uh, service, other services, and technology providers is really important. Obviously, we have some of our own data centers and moving towards green, um, renewable uh, power sources for these data centers is really important. We're doing all of that. We have signed up and partnered with providers around the world to be sure that we could be on the leading edge, not only of using technology, but for driving and developing technologies to be more effective and to be more uh, globally and uh, conscious of, of the impact that we have on the world. Mm -hmm. What, what's the next step, Ursula, for um, carriers like Vion that, you know, run data down pipes but don't really cash in on a lot of other businesses that they could be? Movies, content, um, financing, loans. What's the next step for, um, for carriers like yours? movies, content, financing, loans. It's exactly that. Literally, we have one of the CEOs, the co-CEOs is a, name, a gentleman named Sergi Herrero who came from Facebook. He ran the payments platforms for, for Facebook. We didn't bring him on by accident. We brought him on for that level of uh, expertise and that specific uh, uh, expertise. In Pakistan, as you probably already know, we are a leader in mobile financial services with our offer through Jazz Cash. We expect that to continue to grow. We also want to expand that to other relevant markets in our um, a 10 market set. Uh, content services, uh, big data services, all types of services that can wrap around this pipe that you describe is really important for us. We're investing for us, and that's part of our base strategy. That's part of the value proposition that we want more and more investors to understand and to, uh, we're gonna make them smart on that, on how we're participating, and hopefully that'll move the value up, the valuation of the company up as well. By the way, is it more difficult um, in markets like Russia, in markets like Pakistan, to focus on improving corporate governance, uh, to focus on delivering diversity in business? Are they, you know, too many steps behind the Western world in that sense? I don't think that there are too many steps behind. Um, it's interesting. I think with a strong board and strong local leaders and the right tone at the top, so a good management structure, I found it to be actually invigorating. The, the learning curve is pretty steep, but they are really good learners. And they teach us a lot as well uh, about great practices for inclusion and diversity and serving a broad set of populations. So I don't think that they are too far behind. There is definitely a little ways to go, particularly since most of the standards are set in Western Europe or the United States, so there's a little bit of learning there. But I've been very pleased, very pleased with uh, the uptake and my ability to feel at home uh, from, a, from a compliance and an ethics standpoint in the markets that we do business in. Ursula, really great to see you this morning. Thank you so much for joining us. Come and see us again on Bloomberg TV. Ursula Burns, CEO of Vion.